Father, we thank you for this hour, for this moment. Thank you, Lord, because of the great things you have done already. We accept everything, we claim everything, we receive everything. Let us be upon your people in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that today you be big in everyone in Jesus' name. You are our Savior. You are our Shepherd. You are our Sanctifier. You are our supplier. And we pray, Lord, you'll be a sufficiency in Jesus' name. We pray that no affliction will remain in any life, no sickness in any life, no oppression in any life, no lack in any life. You will supply all the needs of your people in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that all the promises of God will be yes and amen for everyone in Christ in Jesus' name. Bless your people in multiplied fold, even today in Jesus' name. Be glorified in every life. We thank you because we know you have done it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said once again, Amen. We're looking at Psalm 27. In Psalm 27, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, when they came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. All those enemies of yours, they will stumble, they will fall. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though one shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. The confidence the Lord has given you today, this confidence will continue forever in Jesus' name. It says, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place, in the secret of his tabernacle. Shall he hide me? He shall set me upon a rock. Did you say amen to that? And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou seest, seek ye my face. My heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my mother and my father forsake me, what will happen? Then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. It will not deliver you to the will of your enemies. All their plans, all their efforts, all their whatever it is will come to naught on your behalf in Jesus' name. For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You will not faint. I said you will not faint. Because you believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, that goodness you want to see, you will see it in Jesus' name. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The psalm is telling us about the Lord, our strength. Psalm 23 told us about the Lord, our shepherd. Now this is the Lord, my strength. As you look at the psalm, there are three things to look at. Number one, our reliance on the captain. Our reliance on the captain. He is the one that has come before us. He has defeated all the enemies already. He is our conqueror. He is the one who has conquered for us already. 
already. And because of this, we rely on the captain, our reliance on the captain. Number two, the reason for courage. The reason for courage. How is it that whatever surrounds you, whatever seems to be ahead of you, you still have the courage and you still have the boldness and the strength because there is a reason for that. I'll show you now in Psalm 27. And then number three is the reckoning of the conqueror. The reckoning of the conqueror. The things to reckon. And you say, because of this, because of who the Lord is to me, this is what I will be. And you'll be that in Jesus' name. Number one, our reliance on the captain. Look at Psalm 27 and verse 1. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. You see, everything begins with salvation. I've given over my soul, my spirit, my body. I've given my past and my present and my future. I've handed it over to the Lord. And it doesn't bother me anymore. Satan may try to say this and dig up something from the past life. And I say, I hand that over to the Lord, I am saved. He has forgiven my sins. He has taken everything away. The guilt is gone. The condemnation is gone. And the punishment is gone. He is my light. He is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And then he said, the Lord is the strength of my life. Because he is my salvation, he is the strength of my life as well. Of whom shall I be afraid? He said, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, when they come near and they want to kill and, and eat up my flesh, they stumble and they fail. How? Because I have a captain. It's the captain of my salvation. And because he's the one that defends me, is the one that protects me, and is the one he has planned my life for me. Everything I ought to do and what I have to become, he said, I've seen, i found a man after my heart. He will do all my will. God asked me assignment for you. And because of that assignment, he asked for you. He protects you like the apple of his side. That's why when your enemies come near, they stumble and they fall. And he says, though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. And he says, the war shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. Look at this captain in Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. And see, Joshua was just about to go into the land of promise. He was to possess. And what will give him assurance? He was going to possess because all these Canaanites, they came around in a confessed racing. And they wanted, to, they wanted to just pounce on him and kill him and destroy him. Why is it he was so confident? Because he met the captain before he saw those Canaanites. If you will meet the captain before you meet the Canaanites, then all your battles are over and they are over in Jesus' name. Look at this, Joshua chapter 5 verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand and Joshua went unto him and said art thou for us or for our adversaries God the almighty is for you the captain is for you the one that never lost any battle is for you. And he said, Nay, but as the captain of the host of the Lord, I might now come. As the captain of the host of the Lord, I might now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What says my Lord unto his servant? And that was the thing that gave assurance to this man that when you come and up, because you see, this was just before the Jericho walls. And just before your Jericho walls, you come and then you see the captain of your salvation. Thank God everything is over now. I said everything is over now. All those Jebusites and Canaanites and Hivites and whatever eyes they are, they are all gone in Jesus' name. All those Jericho walls, they are falling down in Jesus' name. Because you have met the captain, you have met the victory. I said you have seen the captain, you have seen your victory. I'm looking at, I'm looking at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2, the captain of our salvation. Hebrews chapter 2. 
and I'm reading there from verse 8. Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, we're looking at verse 8. Meet the captain, meet the captain before you get to any battlefield and before you get to conquering Canaan and all those the Jebusites, you meet the captain and victory is sure. Hebrews chapter 2, I read from verse 8. He tells us, thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Jesus. I said, but we see Jesus. I said, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and crowned with honor. And that he by the grace of God should taste death for who? Tell me out loud. He has tasted the death. You will not taste that death anymore. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory. You are one of those many sons he's going to bring to glory in Jesus' name. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. He is the captain of our salvation. And because he is our captain, that's where, that's why he's saying for you, for the rest of your life, there is nothing to fear anymore in Jesus' name. Give me a good, good amen there. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. I'm reading there from verse 10. It tells us, because he is the captain, there is nothing to fear. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, he said, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Give me a good amen. amen. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And ye amen there. That's why he's telling us in verse 14, Fear not thou, warm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, says the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thread the mountains and beat them small and shalt make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt find them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the one wind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and thou shalt do what? I said thou shalt do what? Rejoice in the Lord. How long will that be? Forever and ever, and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. Point number two now, the reason for courage. The reason for courage. We're looking at Psalm 27. I'm reading there from verse 4. It says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. You see, that's why we're courageous. He knows that you are a single-minded man, a single-minded woman. Since you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you were saved, and you were born again, and said, I'm going to follow this captain of my salvation. I'll follow him. I will not turn to the right. I will not turn to the left. I'll be looking unto him, the author and the finisher of my faith. I'll keep on looking unto him, and I know with that single-mindedness, of course, I shall be courageous because I am with the captain. And he is going before me and I'm following after him. I know that no battle will be lost in my life. No battle will be lost in your life in Jesus name. And he says that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. That is that's what gives us courage. Any question that arises, I'll come to his temple I'll ask him. I'll inquire in his temple. Any kind of problem any kind of perplexity, any kind of uh, confusion that arises, I say, no problem, no problem. Today is, uh, you know, just a few days to the time. I'm going to the house of the Lord and he will answer all my questions and all the things that perplex me, all the things that confuse me. I know I'm going to have a solution 
solution to it. And because I know, I may not know the solution now, but I'm going to his temple. I will inquire in his temple. That gives me courage because there is no problem unsolved. There's no mountain unmoved. There's no sickness unhealed. And there's no problem that is not taken away. Everything will be taken care of. When I get to that temple, in verse 5 it says, For in the time of trouble it shall hide me in his pavilion. That's why I'm courageous because I know he will hide me. He will protect me. He will preserve me. And there's nothing. Nothing will cut short your life in Jesus' name. In the secret of his tabernacle, he will hide you and he shall set you upon a rock when the storm is over. When the waves are over, when the difficulties are over, when all the challenges are over, then when all your enemies are all level and all those mountains are level, then he'll put you on top of the mountain, on top of the rock. You'll have the victory in Jesus' name. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies. That's still reminding you again, you'll be the head, you'll not be the tail. You'll be the first, you'll not be the last. And because of the presence and the provision of the Lord and the promise of the Lord for you, it says, therefore will I offer in his temple sacrifices of joy, I will sing. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Look at verse 10. When my mother and my father forsake me, when it appears as if the things I'm looking for here on earth and the only people that can provide that, when it appears they're forsaking me, the Lord himself will take me up. He'll, he'll take that challenge. He will supply all you need in Jesus' name. And can he fail? I said, can he fail? Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. That's why we know he cannot fail because he says all power is given unto him, both on earth here and in heaven. And he says, Because of that, go ye therefore. Go ye therefore. Everywhere you go, you go with that confidence and courage. And you go with that boldness in your heart. Because it says, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Then it says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. It says, you don't look at the people you are teaching. Look at the Lord who has commanded you. And then everything he has said this is what you do he has dictated the job and he has given the job description he has given the assignment and he has given the details of the assignment he says keep on looking unto the Lord and if you keep on looking unto the Lord after all he has all the power the strength all the all the way with her to help you and to keep you up he says teaching them uh, to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo I am with you always is he there with you you see there with you the one that has all the power is right there with you the one that is a healer is right there with you the deliverer is right there with you your supplier is there with you and the one that is taking care of you that is supplying everything you'll ever need spiritually materially is there with you even to the end of the world and the people of god said amen that's why we have courage. We are looking at Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 35. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Make it personal. Who shall separate me from the love of Christ? Anything? Then it says, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? It said nothing. For as it is written, for thy sake, are we all ki are we killed all the day long? Are we, are we are counted as sheep for the slaughter? Nay, in all these things we are. Nay, in all these things we are. In all these things I am. More than a conqueror through him that loved me. For I am persuaded. Any persuaded person there, that persuasion be fulfilled in Jesus' name. 
For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me, separate you, separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, cast not away therefore your confidence which has great recompense of reward. When challenges come, don't throw away your confidence. When difficulties arise, don't throw away your confidence. When temptation comes, don't throw away your confidence. When trials strike, don't throw away your confidence. And if affliction knocks at the door, don't throw away your confidence. It says, cast not away therefore your confidence because he is a captain, because he is a strength, because he is a light, and because he is a salvation. Because this one thing I'm seeking after, when the Lord says, seek my face, my heart says, my face, oh Lord, will I seek? And I know when my father and my mother, when the people around, when they forsake me, the Lord will take me up because of that courage and confidence and boldness and faith and hope in the Lord. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which which has great recompense of reward for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God ye might receive the promise you receive the promise in Jesus name for yet a little while and he that shall come will come for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry now the just shall live how by fear the just shall live by timidity. The just shall live by worry and anxiety. All those things are gone forever. I said they are gone forever. Now the just shall live by faith. But, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. I'm not of them who draw back. I said I'm not of them who draw back. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. It will be yours in Jesus' name. Point number three, the reckoning of the conqueror. The reckoning of the conqueror. We're looking at Psalm 27. Looking at Psalm 27 from verse 13 and verse 14. I had fainted unless I had believed. To see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm believing that I will see the goodness of the Lord in this land of living. I said I believe. I said I believe. I said I believe. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You will not see darkness, you will see light. You will not see problem, you will see solution. You will not see downfall, you see, you'll see conquering. You will not see failure, you'll see success. The goodness of the Lord, the provision of the Lord, you will see in this land of the living in Jesus' name. Now, if that is your faith, is after your confidence, if that is your hope, if that is your expectation, then it says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. As you wait on the Lord, that conquering you are going to conquer. I'm looking at first John chapter 5, first John chapter 5, first John chapter 5. We are the conquerors, you are the conqueror, and that overcoming life, the Lord will make sure that it is in place in your life in Jesus' name. First John chapter 5, verse 4. It says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. You'll overcome the world. The prince of this world, you'll overcome the world. All the powers of the world, you'll overcome them in Jesus' name. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that. I said I believe that. In verse 18, for we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. He will not touch you. 
I said they will not touch you because once to wait on the Lord, once to wait on the Lord, once to wait on the Lord, he receives your power, protective power. The Lord will give to surround you in Jesus' name. Have you not heard chapter 40 of Isaiah? Isaiah chapter 40. As, as thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. There is no searching of his wisdom. There is no searching of his power. There is no searching of his authority. There is no searching of the possibilities in him. There is no searching of his wisdom. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power and all your difficulties you are going to overcome in Jesus' name. He giveth power to the faith and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youths and then shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord. Where are they? They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. I'm looking for a wife. They that wait upon the Lord. I'm looking for husband. They that wait upon the Lord. I'm looking for strength. They that wait upon the Lord. I'm looking for a job. They that wait upon the Lord. I'm looking for satisfaction. They that wait upon the Lord. I'm looking for all the supplies in my life. They that wait upon the Lord. All the heartaches and all the headaches, all the belly aches, all the backache, everything taken away. I'm waiting upon the Lord. I'm looking looking for healing, they that wait upon the Lord. I'm looking for victory and dominion. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall, and they shall walk and they shall not faint. Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Why don't you stand up and say, I'm waiting upon the Lord. Everything I'm waiting for, I'm going to get everything. Everything I'm waiting for, I'm going to have everything. They that wait upon the Lord. Wait, I see say on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. He will strengthen your heart. He will strengthen your life. He will strengthen every proposal of your life. This is the secret of total victory. This is the secret of complete victory. Victory today and victory tomorrow. Victory this week and victory next week. And victory this year and victory next year. And victory for the rest of your life. Dominion and power and strength. All possibilities is given to the people that wait upon the Lord. No fear in your heart anymore, no panic in your heart anymore, no anxiety in your heart anymore, I will not fear. Even the host may rise up against me, yet I will not fear because I know the secret of victory and the secret of dominion is to wait upon the Lord. He is my light. He is my salvation. He is my sufficiency. He is my all in all. And because of that, I'm waiting upon the Lord. I will not be disappointed. I'm waiting upon the Lord. I will not be disappointed. He will not disappoint you. What are you seeking? What are you asking for? And what is it you want in your life? The boldness and the courage and the confidence and the faith and the power and the stability and the victory and the overcoming lifestyle. Wait upon the Lord. And the Lord says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say. Wait, I say. Wait, I say. On the Lord, if you want to mount up with wings as eagles, wait on the Lord. If you want to run and not be weary, wait on the Lord. If you want to walk and not faint, wait on the Lord. If you want all your needs supply, wait on the Lord. If you want all those impossibilities to become possible, wait upon the Lord. If you want the barrenness to turn into fruitfulness, wait upon the Lord. If you want the lack to turn into supply, wait on the Lord. If you want all those backset setbacks to now come as promotion in your life, wait upon the Lord. If you want your fear to turn into faith wait upon the Lord if you want all the needs of your life to be supplied wait upon the Lord they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and they shall not faint this is your time this is your time the time of your victory the time of your dominion the time of your power the time of all sufficiency in your life, boldness and courage, goodness and mercy following you all the days of your life, light and strength, power and might.
face and dominion in your life. This is the time as you wage upon the Lord. Wage upon the Lord because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You'll mount up with wings as eagles. You will run, you will not faint, you will not be weary. You will walk, you will not faint. Your time of victory has come. Your time of dominion has come. Your time of power has come. There's power for your hour. Whatever it is, whatever challenge you are going through, wait upon the Lord and we're sure victory is yours. Dominion is yours. Power is yours. Authority is yours. Solution to every problem is yours. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Courageous, conquering people of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Those who will never faint anymore, will never fail anymore. In Jesus' name we pray. Happy, joyful, victorious, and uh, conquering children of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Are your hands still there? Anointed hands, are they still there? Mighty hands, are they still there? Successful hands, are they still there? And then healing hands, are they still there? With the anointing that breaks the yoke, are they still there? Father, in the name of Jesus. Look at all your children happily and joyfully raising up their hands. Oh Lord, I pray these hands anoint them in Jesus' name. Everything this hand will touch will turn into success. Will turn into blessing. Will give them victory in Jesus' name. All the failure that came through this hand, oh Lord, will banish failure. We banish defeat and we conquer every foe in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that every form of fear, every form of panicking, worry, and anxiety will get away from your children in Jesus' name. All those who have been, uh, you know, running after something, they've not got it, praying for something, they've not got it, they've waited, they have not got it, they have fasted, they have not got it, open the windows of heaven. Everything they missed in the past, I pray you supply right now in Jesus' name. And uh, you know, there ain't anybody there that you're afraid of enemy, afraid of foes, afraid of adversaries. You see them in the day, you see them in the dream. I pray right now, silence their enemies in Jesus' name. I pray that victory will be theirs right now. Victory will be theirs right now. I pray that power, dominion will be given unto them in Jesus' name. As they have waited upon you, as they have called upon your name, I pray they will run, they will not be weary. They will walk, they will not faint. And Lord, I pray that this coming year will be the year of achievement. Will be the year of progress. Will be the year of promotion. And all the needs of our lives, you supply everything in Jesus' name. Confirm your blessing upon every life. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, I am victorious. I said I'm victorious. I have dominion. I am an overcomer. I see you the coming year. You'll be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name.